let's take a look at the definition of a piecewise function and a few common examples. First of all, let's give it a definition. A piecewise function is a function whose graph is divided into intervals. For which each interval has a different function to be graphed. So, for instance, one of the common piecewise defined functions is the absolute value function. And the absolute value function is defined as such. This is a good introduction of how we use the notation. We always start with f of x equals to, and then we draw a bracket. And within this bracket, we are going to have the function itself and then the interval of x for which it's defined. So for the absolute value function, we get the line y equals x for x greater than or equal to zero. And we get the graph negative x for x is less than zero. And so again, what's going on here is we have two different graphs and two different intervals. The first graph is the line y equals x or f of x equals x and this occurs on the right half of the graph. And the second part of the graph, the negative x is for the left part of the graph. And so we end up with this v-shaped thing, but how we would actually define it if we were trying to write it out is as follows. We have those two different parts of the graph. And you can have more than two parts. Uh, we'll talk in a little bit about how you can have three or four or more. Uh, typically, we're just going to stick with two or three. And like I said, the absolute value function in this case is defined as such. Another piecewise defined function is what is known as the step function. And a step function is a constant value over a set interval. So for instance, we might have a step function that starts from 0 to 1 and it stays here. We would have an open dot there. And then at 1, it jumps up here, and then at 2, it jumps up to 2, and so forth and so on. So at 3, it would jump up to 3, and it would just keep doing that. That is an example of one such step function. It doesn't necessarily always have to be that to actually look like stairs. It just has to take definite steps. So for instance, you might have something that looks more like this. Uh, we've got it starting here, going for an interval of one, and then another interval where it jumps up, and again goes for an interval of one, but then jumps back down and has an interval that's also a step function. And that step function would show up a bit more in an electronic application where you're switching between those zeros and ones, those on and off. Let's take a look at a little bit more complex example of a piecewise function. So we've got uh, the following information. And if it's helpful for you to use colors, please do. What we really kind of need to do is block off the graph into set pieces. For instance, if we look at this first part of the graph, notice that it goes for the interval x is less than 0. So this means that we want 
all values less than zero. We should probably also plot the point zero because that's where it's ending, but we're going to put an open dot there. So if you want to go with the x and y values, the table, that's fine. If you want to use your calculator to graph part of that, it's fine. Uh, or if you just want to use the library of functions that we talked about, x squared, we know what that's going to look like. It's going to look like a parabola. Let's just pick a few points. We'll say negative 2, negative 1, and 0, just so we can get at least that part of the parabola. If you plug in negative 2, you get 4. If you plug in negative 1, you get 1. If you plug in 0, you get 0. And again, here we are going to have an open dot. So if we plot those points, we've got the point negative 2. So if we look to graph these points, we can go negative 2, 4 would be about here. Uh, negative 1, we were at 1, which would be about here. And then we have that open dot at 0, 0. And so again, we know we have that parabola shape that's rising off to the left. And again, this is the left part of the graph because it was x less than 0. If you think about just looking at the number line along the x-axis, we care about what's going on to the left and that, uh, that arrow is pointing off to the left. That x is less than 0. Now if we look at the second piece of the graph, x plus 3 for x is greater than or equal to 0. Again, we can plot a few points. This one's even easier than the last one as it's a linear function. Again, we want to start with that differentiating point, that middle point, that 0, and we'll pick 0, 1, and 2. So if you plug in 0, you get 3. You plug in 1, you get 4. You plug in 2, you get 5. Again, if you plot those points at 0, we're at 3, and this time it is a closed dot because we've got x is less than or equal to 0. Uh, at 1, we are at 4, and at 2, we are at 5. So in this case, we've got, again, the line, the arrow is pointing off to the right, so we've got that part of the graph. Uh, these two graphs should not overlap. I know if you graph them in your calculator, it'll show you this line continuing back here and this parabola going up that way. That is not what we have here. You always have to make sure that we cut it at the points the x values tell us to. We do not have overlapping graphs with these, otherwise we don't have a function. It won't pass the vertical line test because you'll be drawing a vertical line and hitting the graph twice. So I don't want to see anybody trying to do that. Uh, the last thing that we can do for this example is to look at the domain and range of the function. In this case, again, the domain are the numbers that we're plugging in, so those are given here with our x values. In this case, our domain is all real numbers, so we can either write that with a bracket and say all reals, or we can write it with the set notation and say that x is included from negative infinity. To infinity. And again, that includes all of our numbers. Uh, if we look at the range, we definitely need the graph for the range in this case. The range are the y values, the up and down values. So if you notice here, we don't have any negative values. We also don't have the value at y equals 0 because it's an open dot. So in this case, the range would actually be, and again, if we kind of list it this way, y such that y is greater than 0. Again, we're not including 0 because it's an open dot there. Or again, if we wanted to write it with set notation, y is included in the set 0 to infinity. And again, we've got that parentheses there because we are not including 0 because it is an open dot. In order to keep the videos to a reasonable length, I'm going to stop this video here. The final video for this section will explain in detail the remainder of the examples from the notes. Once you have completed all of the videos, you should feel confident working with piecewise defined functions.